However, in Tibet, uh, uh, tulku has been <coughs> used to refer to other kinds of <coughs> uh, uh, spiritual teachers and their rebirths. One is uh, <coughs> uh, the tulkus of uh, adepts, that means Siddhas, in Buddhism we call Siddhas, highly accomplished uh, esoteric masters, uh, and Bodhisattvas, highly accomplished uh, Mahayana uh, <coughs> uh, uh, masters, uh, seekers of enlightenment, and uh, <coughs> the uh, Arhats, the uh, highly uh, <coughs> uh, accomplished uh, 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 masters, the elders. So all those highly accomplished uh, uh, adepts, they are not Buddhas, they are not fully enlightened, but they are highly enlightened or highly accomplished. So they have power um, to manifest, take a rebirth in order to serve others uh, with their spiritual power, and they will be more beneficial than an ordinary people. They are not that beneficial as Buddha manifestations. Buddha many Buddhas can manifest infinite beings. At for example, at simultaneously, a Buddha can manifest infinite. Uh, forms, infinite uh, rebirths, simultaneously in order to fulfill the needs of others. But these highly accomplished beings, you know, adepts, don't have infinite power, but they have higher power than ordinary people, and they can serve others much more powerful, much more in, in, uh, in a greater degree than ordinary people can. For example, they can manifest maybe hundreds, not infinite, and they can uh, uh, heal many people, not all, um, and they can teach a uh, uh, great amount of teachings but not everything. So that kind of thing, they have limits. And also Buddhas not appearing, not because of their karma, but uh, these highly accomplished adepts mostly appearing not because of their karma, but because of uh, their compassion and loving kindness for others and only for serving others. Some of them may have some karmic residues, but not much. So many of the, we believe, for example, in Tibet, we have many great uh, tulkus, and we believe they are tulkus of such high adepts. Then there's third kind of tulku now uh, <coughs> in Tibet, that is tulkus of Rebirth of, mm, uh, we called uh, <coughs> uh, virtuous friend. That is a translation of the Kalayan Mitra. Uh, that means masters of great mer great amounts of merits. If someone has created great amounts of merits, good karmas, and uh, if they die. Uh, because of they have created lots of great amounts of merits, good karmas, of course they will have good, uh, good rebirths. And those rebirths, if we find they will be beneficial for us, helpful for us, and also they will have made aspirations to come back to serve their own spiritual tradition and their own followers. So because of their own aspirations and because of 
their own good karma, their good merits, good karmas. So there will be, a, uh, <clears throat> uh, the other birds will be exceptionally beneficial uh, for the devotees, followers. So that's why uh, <clears throat> uh, in Tibet we try to seek uh, the rebirth of those teachers. Uh, uh, and uh, <clears throat> so now, there are, so that means three kinds of tulkus are there. Tulkus of Buddhas, tulkus of highly adept, uh, highly accomplished uh, adepts, and tulkus of not highly adept, but uh, <clears throat> meritorious uh, teachers, good, but good karmas. Those tulkus of the rebirth of uh, meritorious lamas will take will be taking rebirth because of their own karma. Uh, 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 but good karma, they don't have uh, um, bad karmas because they are meritorious in their throughout their life. So they will be taking because of their uh, karma, but good karma, merits, so they will be beneficial, etc. So now the problem or a question is, we don't know when we recognize a tulku, and in Tibet you will find lots of tulkus, which one is belong to which of these three, three main categories, so we don't know. However, um, Either, uh, either of them will be beneficial uh, if we could uh, find them and if we could uh, <coughs> uh, use them as our uh, uh, benefit. Uh, then the how we discover, that's very interesting question for many uh, uh, many uh, many people, especially Westerners, and one way of uh, discovering uh, had have been in the past is sometimes those lamas, when they are dying, will say, "I will take a rebirth in this kind of place, that kind of place, this kind of family, that kind of family," and they will give. Uh, uh, oral uh, instructions or uh, written instructions to the uh, disciples um, privately or uh, publicly. But that is not l lots, but th that happens a number of times. Then s s another way is uh, when a child is started talking or uh, telling uh, their past, they might say, I belong to this kind of family or that kind of monastery, and, uh, and they will remember past teachings or prayers or um, material things, etc. And then also when the, when the child is born, or even the previous deceased lama was dying, etc., they could have a science. Uh, which indicates we, where that child, the lama, will take rebirth, and when the child is uh, taking birth, or even in in uh, uh, in conception, might have signs of some miraculous uh, 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 indications, such as darkness filled with the light, or hearing sounds, or. Um, uh, uh, all kinds of visions, uh, etc. So there are many kinds of uh, signs they will check, and many of them uh, very <coughs> indicate uh, very clearly. But the most popular way of finding rebirths of the Islamas is uh, the disciples or followers of the deceased Lama will go to another most highly respected lama in whom they have a, a, a belief that he or she has 
special kind of clairvoyance, etc., and they will go to him or her and ask if where we will find the rebirth of our deceased uh, teacher. And then he or she will tell uh, through his own or her own clairvoyance or uh, through prayers or uh, through uh, various different ways of uh, uh, checking systems. So we'll tell you where we'll find the child uh, rebirth and uh, what would be the names of the parents, what kind of village, uh, and uh, all many details might give. And then we'll recognize finally that the child is and the rebirth of, and then maybe they might consult other lamas too, other highly respected lamas, many lamas too. Then when they, they all agreed, then the monastery or a nunnery or whatever, they will uh, recognize this child and give a special uh, education. And most of cases, those uh, specially trained, specially recognized, uh, specially trained child will become a really source of uh, <clears throat> Uh, uh, a, a spiritual uh, inspiration, wisdom, knowledge, uh, power, transmission for the lineage to uh, keep. But also another thing is even the ordinary social level, if you find a <clears throat> child, if you, if, you, if you choose a child, and uh, start training from the age of four or five and give all the best uh, training and give all the best facilities, then what happens? This child, almost uh, uh, all the cases, will turn into a specially trained child. And that specially trained child and now grown up, and now well educated, and very accomplished, will become a special teacher for uphold the lineage. So, even it wasn't took of or rebirth of a highly accomplished previous uh, <coughs> master. If you give that kind of care and attention and facilities, the child, the child or at the Turkus always, almost all, all, all the time, will become a really a great source of uh, 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 benefits for the lineage, for the teachings, and for the followers.